Hello and welcome back to Sandy Bay after the update. I did a video not long ago, like a few days ago, about the update itself and trying to get my head around the forage extension. Um, it technically says maze ready, the map does, but I definitely wasn't ready for the maze add on itself. It's obviously quite complicated in my eyes. It might not be for anyone else, but. It is for me, and also there's not that much information on the interweb. And if you wanted to find out, you know, the description, even though it does state quite a bit, it still doesn't answer everything. So, I, I in that video I tried out a few things and struggled with a few things. Since then I've tried out a lot of things, and I think I've got a few more answers. So I thought I'd just do a little video um, before I start my let's play on Sunday Bay. So quickly, I just want to say that my Let's Play on Sandy Bay, from when it ended, is pretty much going to change a bit. I've tried to add the exact amount of cows that I had before. The equipments, I've added a little bit more, but it's going to have to be different just because of the amount of extra work you need to do to obviously do the maize silage add-on. And if you want to produce all the crops that you need and all the ingredients for the cows to have a 100% productive rates on the milk and everything else you you know you're even gonna have to buy it in which is what a lot of farmers would actually do or you can make it which is what I'm gonna do so I will be starting that I've kind of set up the map um, from how I like it I'll quickly just give you a little tour so this is all obviously I've added this in some tractors there this is where I'm gonna store my two grains that I add into my feed mixer for the TMR which isn't actually TMR anymore well it is a TMR but it's not the TMR from before but it still classifies as TMR um, they're the equipment that I'm gonna be using this is like the main equipment that I always use I always just stick in there from before that's for manure take it down to here plunk it in there um, I've obviously got some extra equipment so as you can see here that's for the sugar beets um, they're, way up, way up, way up. they're the headers for the forage harvester which we will definitely need now so I've got a forage harvester and a normal harvester um, and just better equipment really um, at the end of the day I'm going to play this like it's already an established farm it's not going to be a role play like my no man's land is technically a role play where I struggle and you have to make the money and you know everything's pretty much battered equipment and so on uh, whereas this is going to be an established farm it's not role-playing but it is technically I'm not gonna just add money um, from after this point obviously from when I put the equipment in so I'll probably give myself what 100,000 start from there right so let's talk about the crops because uh, I think that's the main thing the best way to do that is to go into the menu itself and I'll go through so your first three there are your cereal crops wheat barley oats right when you're doing your whole crop silage you use a forage harvester with a certain attachment that mulches all that down makes it into a whole crop silage you have to ferment it in a pit you can't make rat bales with that not as i know of i can't do it yet i have found a way which i'll show you to do rat bales on the alfalfa and the other one i forgot clover so that can be done uh, you can also ferment it in a pit but i suggest using maize silage whole crop silage and you don't have to use grass silage in a pit obviously you can just do the normal wrap bales or you can obviously put it in a pit but you have an option whereas maize and whole crop silage they have to be fermented in a pit as far as i know and i've not found anything i've tried everything it makes sense because even though in the shop you can actually buy a maize silage bale and a whole crop silage bale you can't in my eyes you need to use a forage harvester to obviously mulch it up um, and then you can't drop it in a swath. Say you drop it in a trailer after you've taken it from the forage harvester and then windrow it. As I'm sure everyone that's played the game knows, if you do that with a big pile, it's just going to end up in a big pile anyway. And then you can't really pick it up with a baler that's going to wrap it. There is a baler, like I said, that does clover and a baler that obviously does um, alfalfa. But as far as I know, it won't pick up maize. I might be wrong. And if I am wrong, drop it in the comments because I want to learn this stuff too. But as it stands, yeah, whole crop silage, maize, inner clamp, grass, um, alfalfa, clover, you can bale off. And you're going to need all these crops. And you're also going to need two concentrate version of crops, which is an actual realistic addition to a feed mix. 
Uh, it can be potatoes, sugar beets, soybeans. There is a few options. But I've picked certain ones for me that I think could be easier for me to grow. Right, so let's go through. So, like I said, whole crop silage fermented is now the symbol for what it would have been before for just silage. If you go to the shop, and we'll do it now, we'll just plonk it here. If I go to the shop and buy a bale of the normal round bale silage that's the vanilla, in the vanilla game, and plonk it there, if I go up to it, it will say now whole crop silage. That's because it's replaced the original silage bale. Obviously there is grass silage, and like I said, you can buy this now, so you can buy a clover silage, alfalfa silage, grass silage, maize silage, and CCM. CCM, if you add it to a mixer, is classified as straw. So, you can do what you want. That's a mod that I've put on before when I wanted a, a square bale of silage, so that's irrelevant. But yeah, so, that in itself is now um, replaced the normal silage, the whole crop silage has. Right, so your alfalfa is just normal in the game that it was before in Sandy Bay, except now I think it can be fermented, whereas before I think it was just alfalfa windrow, alfalfa hay windrow. Um, so you can obviously, if you want to make bales from that, you, you grow it in a field, obviously. You cut it with a mower. Um, that's the difference. You can cut it with a mower, then you can obviously windrow it. You can make a windrowed version of a bale that's not turned to hay as, as a standard alfalfa. And then the same is if it dries, you can turn it into hay. And then alfalfa ferment, fermented is you're technically just using a certain baler to wrap it. I'll show you where the baler is because in my first video, I kind of got confused and I thought, well, I can do the bale, but I can't wrap it. So right now you can wrap, you can make the bale from all these balers, but you can't wrap them. Okay, so these two here, this the SW4014 wrapper for clover and alfalfa, and the obviously baler combi wraps as well as baling round bales um, for the clover and the alfalfa. So there isn't a square baler right now. If you wanted to make square bales of um, clover or alfalfa, you can do that with a normal baler because you're not wrapping them. But anything that you're wrapping, so really a round bale, you need to use these balers. In the future, they might adapt to the mod where it can use all balers uh, to wrap. I also did notice that with them, you can't change the foil. But if you go in the shop, I might be wrong again, but if you go in the shop and pick a maize plus bale, so let's say grass bale, you can actually change the colour in here, which I think is pretty cool. But if you go on to the actual baler, you can't have that wrapping. So again, that's confusing. Um, it would be nice if I could have it on the baler as well, make it myself, but I don't really know why that would be. Uh, maybe it's my fault, maybe... maybe I don't know, maybe when I buy it, I can change it in the shot. I don't know, I don't know. But as it stands with the bale itself, you can't change the, the wrapping from just the standard ones. Right, so we've gone through to the alfalfa. So clover is the same, exactly as alfalfa. Grow it in a field, cut it with a mower. You can dry it as hay, make a hay bale. And then also you can make it into round bale, using them balers and make it into silage. Now field grass, field grass is actually really good. Before I was a bit confused and didn't ex exactly understand what it was and what it did. But what I actually understand now is it can probably be quite profitable. Obviously there's good prices on it. So it's a thousand what, pounds I've got for every litre. That's on medium difficulty. Um, if you grow field grass and get a normal harvester with a normal header as if you're like, chopping up wheat, you know. Um, and you're trying to sell it as grain at a store. You can take the heads off the field grass and... Um, I'll show you exactly what it looks like now. This is what the field grass looks like when you're obviously in your trailer after you've harvested it. But the really good thing about it, so as you're, as you're harvesting this and you're selling it for a thousand pound each litre, your harvester, instead of dropping straw swaths, it's going to drop grass swaths. So you can also make grass silage from it or you can make, you know, a grass bale. Who makes grass bales? I don't know, but obviously you're doing silage bales from the grass, let's be honest. So it gives you the option of if you want to get some grass silage, but also you want to get a crop and earn money from it, it's kind of the combination of the two there in one. And this is why in the menu over here, you'll have grass silage and silage grass. Forgot which one's which, but one of them is the silage that comes from the field grass as you're obviously chopping it up. You can go over the field grass with a mower. 
if you do that you'll just get your grass um, and you won't get any crop from it so obviously it makes sense to go over it with a harvester chop it up drop a grass swath bale it up off that so you get into two and one there so i actually really like that carrots and onions they're pretty straightforward it's a normal crop you're going to just harvest them like normal uh your maize is obviously you you grow corn you use a harvester uh, forage harvester sorry you chop it up put it into a pit like i said you can't bail it off uh, let it ferment and then you get maize silage so your grass silage there you got you like i've just explained before the two grass silages one from field grass one from just normal grass field uh, your silage clover and your silage alfalfa are obviously what comes from when you're making your round bale and obviously or you're putting it in a pit so my fields now before if you watch my let's play i didn't have this many fields i did i did have quite a few um but i didn't have five six and 41 and i definitely didn't have three and 24 and 25 and all these little tiny ones around here so i've decided to use these fields because i'm going to need them now um i've got rid of the big one up there 22 and swapped it for 24. Uh, the main reason for that is so when you're doing your feed mixes now and for your cows I'm, I'm just talking about cows now because that's what I work with on this farm that I play. Um, there's four structures now, for four feeding categories, let's say. So, just go down to here. So, as you can see, there's maize silage, grass silage, and the first one, whole crop silage, and so on. And this looks like there's a lot of hay and a third category of alfalfa and clover silage. And then you've got your grass, your clover, fresh maize. Fresh maize. Now, before... If you fed your cow TMR and he had a lot of hay or even a lot of grass in the other categories, he wouldn't eat them categories. He'd just go to the top one, eat all your TMR and that get consumed first. Whereas now, actually all four get consumed at the same time. Each one accounts for 25% production rate for your cows. So if you want to have a 100% production rate, you obviously need all four to be fully fed or just some feed in them um, so they can consume from them. So... I'll just explain the four categories and what they actually are. Uh, these are what this is what was stated on the description for forage extension mod and the maize plus and all that. So the first one is a silage category for energy. So it's where your cows get the energy from. You can even feed oh, obviously maize silage, a grass silage, or whole crop silage. Your second category is the structure of the material, so it has to be hay. So it's what builds up the structure of your food as you're adding it into the mix. Uh, so the volume basically um, and then the third category is silage again but it's protein so this is where your cow is going to get its protein from so you can use clover silage or alfalfa fermented um, and the fourth category is fresh fodder so anything that's fresh from the ground so fresh maize clover fresh grass that kind of stuff so really what you want to be doing there is obviously filling them all up as you can now i've not put any alfalfa fermented or clover sergeant but it's still full and that's because if you use a tmr mixer or a feed mixer and create tmr it fills up three categories straight away and the hay is the only one that you have to manually fill out after to do that you need to have a good ratio now i think in my last video i took out the i took out the actual feed mixer and i showed you what it wanted and there is different categories so you can go on the, the, uh, the forage extension website for the mod and from that you can actually look at the categories that you can add because it's not just soybean for example and sugar beet that I'm adding to it as concentrates at the bottom I think one's moisture and the other one's concentrate I like the realistic side to it how it's um, I'm stuck in the post yeah I like the realistic kind of way to it how it's you know, you're adding sugar beet, for example, because it's a concentrate. Um, you're adding soybeans for the moisture, and this is what it's doing to your cow's feed. Right, so this is a mod, this Keenan Mech Fiber Mixer. It comes originally at like a volume around 20 something thousand. I changed it in the XML, XML file because I have a bigger herd of cows. I don't want to be kind of feed, uh, filling these up four or five times. So I changed it to 48,000. That's one thing that I recommend you do, to be honest, because with my tally, uh, front, lo front load and tallyanders, I've got two buckets that I've changed just because it'll perfectly match the ratio that I want to put into this mixer. 
So now I've got a telehandler bucket that's uh, 12,000 and I've got a, a front loader bucket that's 3,000 for my concentrates. So I just change them in the XML files. So if you go into the actual compressed file itself for the mod, and don't extract it. Just open it up with a, a software that obviously you can usually, I don't know, WinRAR or 7-zip, anything like that. You go into it, you find the actual XML file for the actual mod itself. Go in there, fill units, you'll see it. If you know that from the mod, oh, it has a, you know, a load kind of thing of 2,000 and you want to change to 3,000, just look for the 2,000 near fill units um, or fill and change it to 3,000, save it, and that's it. It's literally as simple as that. You can still leave it in your mod folder as you do it. It's really simple to do, but obviously you can kind of customize it to what you're doing. Um, so I recommend that if you want to play around with that. Obviously, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, not a problem, don't do it. All right, so the feed mixing ratios here. So as you can see in the top left corner, it says maize silage, um, and then you can see the arrows of where you need to aim for, and whole crop, and same again with straw, grass silage, soybeans, and sugar beets, but it doesn't actually state anywhere clover, alfalfa, or anything like that, and you don't have to put hay in anymore. So for me, who uses a 48,000 litre mixer, I put in 12,000 litres of maize, 12,000 litres of whole crop, 12,000 litres of grass silage, 6,000 litres of straw, 3,000 litres of soybeans, and 3,000 litres of sugar beans, and that gives me a perfect mix ratio of 48,000. The only way you're going to do this is if you want to work it out, get a piece of paper and a pen, work it out on the um, description for the mod, it tells you the percentages, even though you can see them there, it doesn't actually give you a number, uh, but it does tell you the exact percentages and you can work it out. If not, just play around. Um, it doesn't have to be exact. You can put one bale in. It depends how big your bales are. I use the variable bale mod so I can change the size of my bales. I, I always like 6,000 litres as a bale. It means that I don't have as many bales. And also, it kind of works really well before with this mixer. And obviously going forward, I kind of want to do the same with it being the same volume for me. So, again, it's one of the things. Play about. If you want to change the, the bales that you get, use the variable bale mod. And then you can change around what how big you want it. If you're sticking with the normal 4000, it will be a little bit different than what I'm doing it at. But you can sit down and work it out. One thing I will say is if you put this full and then go and fill it up into the into the trough and you have 10,000 left, as soon as you close this game and save it, every time I've started back up, my feed mixer is empty. Now I don't know if it's this certain mod, this certain actual feed mixer, or if it's any feed mixer, because obviously it's now different, the mixes that are going in, it just doesn't save the quantity that's in there, so it's always empty again. So if you haven't got much feed, and this is like 95% full, um, and then you save the game, close it, come back to it the next day, and it's all gone, you might be like, for God's sake, I needed that feed. But for some reason, that is, that is how it is. Also, I will explain now that there is another little bug that I found with the manure mod so if you leave this if you leave this attached to there over and then save the game and go out and come back in what you'll find and there's a massive massive hose that's stretching all the way out to the sea and it's like just completely goes across the screen it's obviously some kind of graphical error I don't know it's an error anyway um, it's a little glitch and what I've found is if you you can't take it off, if you try and sell it that's the only way of getting rid of it, but then you can't use this at all after and you can't actually use any anything. So if I buy another one of these and try to attach to this it doesn't work until I close my game out and start back up again. So the way to avoid that is just don't leave this attached. If you've stopped the game and saved it just make sure you put it on the floor um, and then obviously make sure this is as empty as it can be. I mean, if it was me and I, and I had a lot and I couldn't and I had to save the game, I'd, I'd, I'd load it onto the floor and just leave it on the floor and then if I have to come back and just put it back in, I'd do that. What you'll notice is if your mixes aren't right, it'll say forage as always and then eventually when your mix is correct, it'll say TMR. If it says TMR, you know that when you put it into your mixer, into your trough, sorry, that it's going to basically start loading up the three just show you my mouse these three will automatically start rising but hay doesn't so even though you haven't got any clover silage or alfalfa fermented in the mix itself 
it's obviously filling up that protein section with what you've put into the mix itself with it being a total mixed ration so you don't have to worry about even doing clover or alfalfa if you don't want to if you're like me and you want to actually do TMR mixes which is it shortens it down because it means I don't have to go and fill up maize in that one and then fill up clover in that one I can put obviously take grass from that now I just need to fill up my mixer put the mixes in it fills up the three and then obviously I'm going to put hay in after so you know if you want to do clover hay and alfalfa hay still get a good representation of all the different types of crops you can do in the map you can do that and then add it into the hay category um, and then you can obviously do your TMRs which will fill up the rest which makes it a lot simple uh, but obviously a lot more realistic and it means that you're not just using the same crops all the time you're obviously filling different types um, and that's that so this is obviously why I've got soybean here and sugar beets but yeah, um, I just wanted to give you an update because before I was pretty much just trial and error really, I was trying to figure it out, uh, but I've put a lot of time into this now since it came out and I've tried to make the map pretty much suitable for me pl playing a game going forward. Um, it should be fun because it means that I've obviously got all my fields set up. Hopefully that helped and answered a lot of questions that anyone might have had. Um, it is really worth it, I think, to put the time and to learn this mod and obviously adapt to it. It's a lot more complicated and if you want to just play it and you're having fun, you know, there's no reason why you can't just carry on as normal. But for me personally, I like the idea of it. Um, looks pretty cool, doesn't it? But yeah, if there's anything that you want me to try and maybe find out or that you've noticed, put it in the comments and I'll have a look and then if I can help anyone out, I will. So that hedge there, I planted that using the tool. Now, if you want to plant a hedge, I'll quickly just show you one here. And I can always take it out after. So it's, if you look down at the bottom right of the screen, I'm trying to find which one it is. It's not, it doesn't actually look, no. It doesn't actually look like hedge. Where are you? There you go. So it looks like to me, um, I don't know what it looks like, but it's definitely not more like a hedge. So that's how you do it. If you want to, you know, do a hedge, you can just do that. Now I've tried to go down these and cut them. Uh, for some reason it won't. So I don't know if I have to actually put them in here over at the top of them. Well, I don't know. Maybe it is just as simple as going down them. And That wasn't very straight. I'm using a controller. I usually like to use a mouse doing that. Uh, but you get the idea. You can also plant it, like I said before. So we'll go and use it. Now, I'm not going to lie. I found the controls really difficult on this cutter. I don't know why. I just did. It wasn't the easiest thing to do. It's not like when you use a front loader or a tally handler. There's just so many access to it that it would just, it, yeah, it blagged my head. out of the way cow so let's try and see if I can do this I think that should be alright so we can turn it on maybe do I need to put the EPT on yep that'll help go cutting hedges really cool add-on to the game makes them a lot neater um, I would have liked it if the map itself all the hedges were cutable I mean instead of just planting them in over it I don't know if that was just a lot of work for Austin David I don't know but um, yeah I probably would have liked that if you notice as well it hovers over the grass and cuts it as I've just gone over it, cuts the grass. I mean, I might be wrong. It might do the hedges. It might. They might need to grow or something. I don't know. Because I know they change within seasons of colour. Um, let's just see if I'm actually talking absolute nonsense. Come 
Go away, copper. I'm cutting an edge. Don't beat me. I beat you. Oh, there's two of them. The crime rate's horrendous. On the coast. So yeah, um, it doesn't look like it's doing anything, so you must have to just put them in yourself. This copper. He ain't even going that fast. He, got, he just wants to get home. So yeah, I'll leave the video there. Hopefully, like I said, it helped you. If it did, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos on Farming Simulator. I'll be doing my Sandy Bay Let's Play very soon. But obviously, I'm going to keep on with the role play that I'm doing on No Man's Land. I'm actually really enjoying that right now. Again, thank you very much. See you next time.